What up, y'all? Justin Gay, Seeds and Zans, dude. Yo, it's experiment time. Well, pretty much here on the plot, we use 100% peat moss to grow our microgreen trays in. I've been wanting to try some stuff out. So this experiment is going to be a couple things. It's going to be one for compost team. Two, got these things sent to me called veg bed. I've kind of been wanting to go over to one of these mats, especially when it comes to my brassicas. They have sold full trays into restaurants before, but uh, I think this would be a better look. So we got these veg beds jumping off, and these guys too. This stuff too. This is organic burlap. I wanna see if I can actually grow microgreens on it because, yo. You can pretty much grow microgreens on anything, right? <laughs> We're just gonna see. We're gonna see what we can do here. You can get this stuff really cheap. This veg bed stuff, a little bit more expensive. Um, this is actually a bamboo fiber growing mat with the burlap. This is organic burlap, by the way. Don't use any kind of stuff with the oil and stuff on that. That's bad news. This is organic burlap. Um, it's not been treated, so we're cool here. A lot more porous, less expensive. But if it works, it works, so I don't know. I think if the mesh was a little bit tighter, it would be better. So maybe I'll double it up or something, I don't know. Let's do it. So James over at Moon Mountain Coffee gave us burlap sacks, raw burlap sacks. This is what he ships his coffee in. It's pretty cool. Long Beach, man. These are a lot thicker. The mesh is a lot tighter. So I'm gonna use these as opposed to that roll that I have. Um, Cause I think they're gonna do a lot better job. Here's the plan. Two burlaps, two of the veg bed, and then two just peat moss. We have since begun putting lime in our grow medium, or just the peat moss, and already uh, it looks like there's an, an improvement. <clears throat> I can't confirm or deny it. There's a lot of variables, other changes, there's all kinds of stuff like that. We have been extremely moist lately, which is kind of rare, and still. Um, we've been getting, right now we're getting right about a half a pound of broccoli, but we're trying to get that back up to see exactly, uh, I mean, you know what I'm saying, but you know, can you grow in something as little as burlap? Let's check it out. Plan is this, we're gonna put compost heat in one of these guys, just water in the other one. We do that with each of these. For this experiment, I'm gonna use broccoli. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but just water. We'll give these guys a couple days, let them germinate, and then uh, we'll be back to see what happens. Compost tea, agua. I think if the compost tea can get past germination, we might have a pretty good chance, I don't know, maybe seeing something pretty cool here. Either way, it's gonna be cool. I'm also wondering if it's gonna just grow on uh, the burlap. I figure if grow on a bamboo mat or a cocoa fiber mat, any of these benign things have any kind of uh, value of nutrition, it doesn't matter what they're actually growing in. So let's see what happens here. All right, y'all, we'll be back in a couple of days. As you can see, we're actually looking pretty damn good here. This is a burlap untreated burlap. I'm sorry, this is a veg bed untreated, just straight peat moss untreated. And this one is burlap with compost tea. This is peat moss with co compost tea. And this is the veg bed with compost tea. I'm just really happy that the compost tea stuff didn't get any kind of mold on it. That has always been my biggest concern when it came to microgreens and bacteria and stuff like that is that there would be some kind of a mold because you're introducing now a live organism, right? That's gonna be feeding. Two, it's gonna be in a very closed uh, position in the dark, in warmth for a very long time. It's just like a breeding ground for nasty fungus and mold, but it didn't happen, so we're cool. This veg bed, this one right here, I think was overwatered. I think that's what's going on here. Um, Cause when you look at this one over here, it looks really good. They look really solid. What's really taking my breath away while I'm like, damn, I can't believe this is happening, is this one right here. The straight burlap, right? It's benign, therefore, if this works, then this should work. Actually, even this, peat moss. If any of these work, then this should work. <laughs> damn, I'm gonna push these guys out into the sun so you guys can see them. They've already been watered, but I think 
Today I'm not going to do any compost tea. They feel fairly saturated, so I'm gonna leave them alone. Check it out. All these are the watered. Those are the compost tea. There is beginning to become a clear difference between the compost tea and the not compost tea in terms of development. Check it. Burlap. Peat moss is pretty much what I expected. That's what we use here. This is about the time it looks like this. It looks right. And that is the veg bed. Bone deal with this little section here. It just got overwatered. It looks like it's trying to sprout. Um, so kind of a bum deal there. Here we go for the compost tea. The development in the compost tea is way bigger. Now the peat moss and compost tea is the best tray. It's taller. Development is about right. They're about equal there. But the length, definitely longer with that of the compost tea. And then the development, the overall development on the other two, on the burlap compost tea and the veg bed compost tea, those guys are about the same with one another, but both of those guys are better than that of the trays that were just watered. This is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep it pushing, man. We'll see what happens in the next couple days. Day seven. Which one do you think is the compost tea? Which one do you think has just been watered? That right there is a peat moss. Can't really get it with the... You can't really tell with the uh, burlap, the veg beds. But there is a bit of a difference. There you go. Compost tea, water. Compost tea, water. I'm sorry, uh, water, compost tea. Compost tea, water. I was able to do that just by looking at them. Yeah, the compost tea definitely gave an edge in terms of development. I don't know if it's significant enough to start a regiment with it, unless of course you can make that regiment of compost tea um, easy. I think I do have a way of doing so, but I'm gonna give these guys another couple days and see what they look like and see what poundage we can get out of these guys. The burlap is actually, <laughs> It's actually quite impressive, to be honest with you. The burlap compost tea versus the veg bed compost tea. I'm just saying. The veg bed is slightly taller than it, though. So it is outperforming the burlap, but, dude, burlap's free. Looking pretty good right now. What up, y'all? So here we are. Day 12. I wanted to harvest these guys yesterday, but unfortunately I had to go to set. So we'll harvest them today. We'll see exactly how much everything weighs, pretty much which did better. So the compost tea, peat moss is clearly the winner here. I didn't have to compost tea this every day either. One of the surprises, the burlap. I'm really into that. It really looks good. The burlap with compost tea, of course, looks the best. Compost tea, water. Yeah, the development is really high, but you do have growth, a lot of growth, in just the burlap. You come to the veg bed. So we did get this part of the veg bed to grow in. It just took a little bit longer, but it came in nicely. But this veg bed with the compost heat, once again, far superior. You can see by the edges, Right, and then this guy, burlap. Peat moss. Now you can actually do that with. To me, that's awesome. Actually, you know what, we'll show you my compost tea brewer. Show you guys this. And then we might actually get into um, building one of these guys, because I kind of want to make this one a little bit better. But um, I want to show you guys, you don't really need much as well, right? So check it out. This is where we wash. This is where it all starts. We wash here. We pump that out into here. So this one we pump it into and we, have to, we allow it to off gas. And then as soon as it's off gas, we pump it into the other, into the compost tea brew. So it's like a 24 hour 
brew and then this one right here. We normally try to get rid of it within 48 hours. That's probably the most important part of this whole entire setup. That's an active aqua. I think it's a 60 watt pump. But anyway, it's a, a commercial air pump. As you can see, I actually want to make this a little bit better. One thing I definitely wanted to show you though, is that just doing it like that, you can easily do it in one of those and have really stellar results, you know? Uh, for some time, man, I was always like, does compost tea really work if you're not brewing it like this certain way, blah, blah, blah. It works fine in a bucket, dude. Like, calm down, you know? You're, you're gonna be cool. So anyway, just uh, throwing it out there. Let's get a harvest on these guys and uh, let's see what the end totals are. I'm gonna start with water first. Water burlap. One thing that I know is gonna be really cool is just the fact that I can lift this stuff up and not get dirty. I think that that's awesome. Get them in two inch trays. I feel that things grow better in two inch trays, honestly. Oh man, there's no dirt. It's so great. 9.8 ounces, not bad. Not bad tall, man. Why don't just burlap them into that? Burlap compost tea. Burlap compost tea, 10.2 ounces. Our seeding densities, we're at 60 mil um, for our broccoli. That's pretty much what we always seed broccoli at. Ingredients. We use right about four ounces. Two, 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 pretty balanced, man. Straight across the board. You guys see that? It says it's an 85 ounce scoop. One of these full of worm castings. One cup. I'm not sure if you'll be able to find this. It's just straight kelp. I get this from the uh, fishmongers at the market. I only put a half a cup in with this, and that goes into our, our big brew, which is right about 25 gallons. Veg bed water, 7.5. Kind of expected it to be kind of under. Um, it had a rough go, so. Veg bed compost tea. 9.9. Well, that's veg bed with compost tea and the one that I've been waiting for, because I feel as though if I do any of these, it probably it probably will be compost tea with um, peat moss, seeing peat moss is what we do already. Peat moss and water, 10 ounces. Last but certainly not least, peat moss and compost tea. This is the one I've been waiting for. 10.8. So there's that, man. So, yeah, there's a, Bit of a difference, about an ounce, but we'll see what they taste like. Well, that video was kind of getting a little long, so in order to try to save a little bit of time, I didn't want to show the taste test of each one of them. So I'm going to kind of just break it down to you. The burlap and water was spicy and a really deep, like, brassica type flavor. The burlap and compost tea was a bit fresher, still spicy, kind of still had that spicy wash over it, but not, I don't know, it was not as deep, if you will. Um, not bad at all. It was delicious, but not, it was just different. The veg bed, the veg bed and water by itself, that one kind of had like a cinnamony taste to me for whatever reason. Of course it had like the, all the brassica taste, but it had like a cinnamony taste as well. The compost tea, again, it had like this freshness, um, a really nice, fresh, good overall taste. Not as deep, but just really good. Pea moss and water, just that's what I'm normally, that's what I'm used to really good brassica flavor. That being said, however, the peat moss and the compost tea probably took the cake for me. I think that that one is probably my favorite one. It almost even finished almost sweet, I guess. It, it, was, it was really nice. I don't know that a customer would be able to tell the difference between the compost tea and the knot. Um, the burlap, I think more of your customers probably would say that it was spicy though, however. This was like my first cut, depends on how long you keep them in your storage and all that. Um, because you know, the flavor profile will change over time, um, actually kind of rapidly. So that's something to keep in mind. Overall grow, man, from using the compost tea, which is everything, yeah, I gained right about 0.8 ounces. Um, so almost an ounce after using the compost tea. So that's something, right? I mean, if the way you look at it, however you much, however much you sell an ounce, right? So say for instance, I were, I, I'm gonna sell every single thing that I'm generating here, which does happen. 
Um, I sell every single thing, but every single thing I utilize compost tea. That compost tea, just doing that, gave me right about 0.8 ounces to one extra ounce. We sell our microgreens for $3 an ounce, right? I do over 100 microgreens. That could easily equate to $300 on paper. I don't know. I'll leave that for you to decide. If there's not an easy method to deliver the compost tea, it may not, you know, it may not be worth it to you if it's that much more work. Play around with some stuff yourself, you know. More than likely, we will be utilizing compost tea at least more than we do now on our microgreens. We're gonna play around with it a little bit more. This is just like the first test. I can't really come to a definitive event just because of this one, this one go, but. It's definitely something I would like to play with in the future. That being said, like you know, I showed you earlier before, we actually do have the compost tea brewing system. We have the one that we're getting ready to build. And a lot of that's because we utilize compost tea around the plot. That I'm not making anything special here or just the microgreens. If I had to, knowing what I know now, yeah, it might be worth it, especially after putting them all together. It might be worth it. Oh, that's another thing too. The mats, that was awesome. Being able to cut and not deal with any kind of dirt or everything was just clean. That, for the most part, we can harvest and keep everything clean. But every once in a while, I mean, I do have to be aware of my dirt line, my soil lines right now. Not having to worry about that was awesome. Yeah, I think that mats are actually pretty cool. We would definitely be losing some weight if I were to go over to a mat. Um, although if we did the match with the compost tea, it's not too far off of our peat moss with water. So it might be pretty cool. The burlap, that was awesome. That's something just to maybe keep out there, you know? I would actually love to play with that burlap some more because I think that, that there's something to it. I think it actually might be pretty cool. Um, and then using burlap with the compost tea definitely did seem to curb that spiciness down. Uh, it kind of round out the flavor a little bit. So, you know, it was pretty cool. The veg beds, I don't have anything negative to say about them, uh, but I think just about any pads, at least the pads that I've seen so far, um, they're really thin. So you really want to be aware of what it is that you're growing on those beds maybe. It seems like um, sunflower or pea or maybe even grass might mess those up. Maybe not, I don't know, or maybe not get the mass that they need just because they need a more you know, more um, more space for their roots. Although we only are growing here in right about an uh, inch and a half of uh, grow medium. I'm sorry, an inch and a quarter of grow medium. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind. I mean, it's still a lot thicker than what those little mats are. They, they actually surprisingly well did pretty good in our system on an outdoor level. I pretty much grew them exactly the same way that I grow all these. So, there was no special treatment to them. So I was pleasantly surprised. Anyway, I would love to hear what it is that you guys had to say, any of the questions that you guys might wanna know, um, things that I might've left out on this, things that you might've seen, your experiences, dude, like, yeah, let's just see what we can do here. This is, this is pretty cool. Um, anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed this, hope this helped. Uh, talk to y'all soon, man, peace.